Yes. So we are learning and understanding from the Yoga Sutra. Yoga Sutra is a book of in depth psychology and uh, that explains all about mind mindfulness meditation. In the entire first four formula, the Patanjali gives us a clear understanding that how to help the mind so that you start working on the mind and the moment you start working on the mind, you live in peace and happiness. So he says in the second sutra that emptying the mind of its content leads to the highest state of mindfulness or meditation. Then what happens? When that state of mindfulness is attained, you realize your true nature. What is the true nature? It is pure consciousness. What is pure consciousness? It is of the nature of permanent peace, happiness, love and wisdom. Until you reach to that state, the mind continues to live in other states and that causes the suffering in life. For suffering, no one else is responsible outside. Not your honey. Then why you say honey? Honey is responsible for your stress. We have to say, we have to think of it. No, I'm just, you know, so no one else outside is responsible for our suffering. For our stress, for our anxiety. What happens to the mind? That the mind experiences the stress and anxiety and the suffering. That needs to be understood. So these masters have done, you can say, a lot of practices and the knowledge is revealed, which is also quite similar to the science in modern psychology. First thing to understand, the mind divides and perceives. Without dividing, the mind do not perceive, do not acquire a knowledge. Say, for example, when I say, I know you. So you become an object in my mind, that is the objective state, and I is the subjective state of the mind. Are you getting it? So simple. I know, what I say, I know you, you are an object in the mind. That is the objective state of the mind. And I am the subjective state of the mind. I know my house. My house is an objective state of the mind. I still am the subjective state of the mind. So the mind divides and perceives. Now see, when I say I am stressed or when you say I am stressed. I is the subjective state of the mind and the stress is the objective state of the mind. Without dividing, the mind cannot gather any knowledge. Whether it is the knowledge of pleasure, knowledge of stress, knowledge of anxiety, knowledge of duality, knowledge of conflict. I know my honey. 
Now everyone knows their honey. The honey is different from me. That is how I know it. How simple it is. But what happens? We forget this separation in our life. And the moment you forget, then what it means? That seer in the scene identifies with itself and that is the source of all the problems, worries. This is what our master says. Are you getting it? Let me repeat it. When I say I know you, so you are objective state of the mind, I am the subjective state of the mind. So I am the knower, you are an object. So that object is seen, felt, experienced, known. So there are two things here in the scene. When this here in the scene identifies with itself, it has to cause suffering. Why? Why? That is the cause, the origin, the root cause of the suffering. The moment they identify with each other, then what happens in the mind? Then the mind says, you are responsible for my peace, you are responsible for my suffering. But why it happens? Internally, the mind is seeking pleasure and happiness from others. <clears throat> As if the other is an object of pleasure, other is an object of peace, other is an object of happiness. Take one example, if other is coffee, I like coffee. I get happiness of the coffee. So mind, due to ignorance, sees and experiences as if happiness and the pleasure is in the coffee. So if happiness and the pleasure is in the coffee and I don't get it, what happens? That happiness is gone. Now, I give one example of the coffee. You can apply with a person, with a people, with an object, with a location, with anything outside. Are you getting it? This is, first is the intellectual understanding. This takes, once we keep that understanding in our mind and do the practice of meditation, the meditation succeeds all the time. So the first principle we understand, the mind divides and perceives. Second step, our understanding is that there are two things when the mind says divides. What is that division? Seer and the seen, the knower and the known, the subject and the object. Then because of their identification, the mind blames and complains and reacts can you react against yourself? The answer is no. If there is no one inside, you cannot react against yourself. So what is that blame, complaint, reaction, expectation that the mind is seeking pleasure and happiness from the world outside? What is that world? World of people, of place, of objects, of things. Uh, are you clear? What is the conclusion? Conclusion is so simple, my friends, that the moment you feel you experience stress, anxiety, duality, conflict, become aware. Mind, hold on, stop this nonsense. I am responsible for it. Look inside, don't look outside. Find out the root cause. So now, from there, we can move a little further before we go for meditation. The mind lives in five subjective states. What are those five subjective states? The first state is constant wandering of the mind. It lacks attention. 
It doesn't pay attention. And then it says, you're responsible for my stress. Because mind is not wandering. Second, second state, the mind is obsessed. Honey, I told you to return home early so that we can sit together for a cup of tea. And you never return early. So I complained. One example. So mind has an obsession. And third is the mind is lazy. These are the three states of the mind. Fourth state of the mind is mind is one pointed. What do you mean by one pointed? How many people are living inside you? Only one. So the, when the mind is facing inside, that is known as one-pointedness in Eastern wisdom. It is not that you have to force yourself, force the mind to concentrate on one thing. How can you concentrate on oneself? You simply start looking inside you. That makes you one-pointed. So one-pointedness means there is a clarity in the mind about there is a clarity of the goal of life. What is the goal of life? Is to discover that peace and happiness within me. One-pointedness means the mind is seeking and searching within. What it is seeking and searching? Our true nature. You cannot find your true nature outside in the world. You are within yourself. So when the mind follows with a clarity, of the knowledge, understanding, follows the practice, succeeds in mindfulness. And what are the five objective states of the mind? There is a right perception. What is the right perception about you all? You all are beautiful women. What is a wrong perception? You are wife to someone? No doubt. Yes. Can you show me where is the wife? Where is the wife in you? First you are a woman, then you are a wife. Huh? Michelle is a research officer. Can you show me where is the research officer? Just think of it. Think of it. Research officer is a label given to you. The wife is a label given to you. The son is a label given to you. Husband is a label given to you. Why? When you are before your honey, perform your role. Finish. How simple it is. So what I told you in the beginning, the mind identifies. You see that, you know, I'm your honey and you are behaving like, you all know, we say different things. We use that label. I told you about the identification. I'm very, I'm a millionaire. Get lost. That is also identification. You see that? I am very poor. That is also an identification. First, I am a man. I am a human being. Then all these labels. The moment you drop that identification from the mind, you cannot prevent yourself not to be happy, not to be in peace. But that needs to be understood, needs to be applied in life. No, you have been my wife, you are crazy. So what will be your should be your response if you don't have you don't identify? Thank you very much. I'm more crazy than you think. Finish. Finish. But then when the other guy comes down, can you help me to know why I am crazy so that I can change myself? You don't identify. When you identify, then you are angry. 
then you are reactive. If one complains one thing, you have 100 complaints. It is very easy. But it is challenging to hold back to yourself. <laughs> to hold back to yourself. That is real, the journey of meditation that needs to be understood. So what is the summary? Summary is only one. If the mind is working on you, it will definitely make you crazy, lazy, blaming, reactive. Problems, suffering are always around you. And if you are working on the mind, you drop the identification, the mind remains one-pointed, and that one-pointed mind always succeeds in meditation or mindfulness. We have had enough of talk. Just, I can tell you the by regular practice of mindfulness, the first result is that you drop that identification. You go too far from those labels. Because you go too far from the labels, that is why you experience relaxation and peace and calmness. I'm not responsible for your peace and calmness. Because the mind goes too far from those stuff the mind is facing inside, it reveals that calm and the peace from within. Do you think I'm responsible? Not at all. Are you sure? Let us start our journey. Let us start our practice. Close your eyes. Don't worry, I'll send you the digital file to all of you for practicing for a week before we meet next time. So close your eyes. Let us start our practice. Eyes are closed. First stage, eyes are closed and the mind is looking inside. But your mind may react, what I have to look inside, whatever is there. Do you see calm or do you see blankness? Yes. Look there. Do you see darkness? Yes. Look into the darkness. The mind says you see uh, uh, space. Okay. Look into the space. So when the mind is looking inside, facing inside, that begins the journey where you can find yourself deep inside you. That's why we are looking inside. So that looking inside is beyond and behind the body and the mind. Because the mind cannot jump beyond and behind. We have steps. So the second step in the stage one is being comfortable. Move the mind on the neck joint. Be there, feel the presence, and experience sensation, being comfortable, and steadiness. In a morning session, that beautiful woman told me, I was fully aware that I move the mind on the body joints, I should not move the body to the mind. Look at this. This is only an awareness. And what is that awareness? Awareness is knowledge. What is that awareness? Awareness is an experience. Are you with me? Move the mind on the shoulder joints. So body is not moving at all. The mind is moving on the shoulder joints. With eyes closed, you feel the sensation, being comfortable and steadiness. The mind moves on the hip joint. What is the goal? Being comfortable. What makes me comfortable? When the mind starts facing inside, what happens? 
the mind starts going too far from the body. The body is a matter. How it can move by itself without the mind? You see, we are doing the practice with a clarity and understanding. So move the mind on the entire body, on all the joints from the crown of the head to the toes. Slowly, you are looking all the joints. The body is not moving. And you feel sensation being comfortable and steadiness. I'm not giving any practice that you do not know and you cannot understand. My master used to say that simpler the practice, higher it is. Complex the practice, beginners, it's a beginner practice. So why I talk in the beginning to make you understand with the clarity, there must be a right knowledge. Clarity. So when there is a clarity and the right knowledge, what happens? The mind follows that. And when the mind follows, it becomes a simple practice. So being comfortable. In the stage one, we move to the third step. Being carefree. Sometimes it takes long time for people to understand. All these thoughts, feelings, sensation, everything that you experience is different from you. The way the highway is different from the traffic. You have a trailer, you have a bus, you have your own car, you have your SUV, and so on. They are different from the highway. So the mind has two layers. One is the highway and the other is the traffic, the thoughts and the feeling and the sensations. They two are different. What we discussed today, the mind causes the suffering due to identification. Think of it. If the traffic becomes the highway or highway becomes the traffic, what would happen to the highway? And what would happen to the traffic? That is why I say what you do in this step. Look at these thoughts, feelings, sensations are not you, different from you. How come? How come you see that? You see that it's a very simple practice. I'm making it simple by explaining it. You are looking into the sky, the birds are flying. Are you aware of the space about the birds? Yes. The birds are moving? Yes. They have disappeared? Yes. They come again? Yes. Same thing, mental traffic. Let the thought come and go. Don't, you know, the, so the mind plays a trick with you. How, what is that trick? Mind says moving the body is not a thought. You cannot move the body without the mind. Just become aware of it. Don't allow the mind to play trick with you. Any feeling, sensation, thoughts, images, are not you. They are your experiences. If I make the statement, you will understand it. The experiencer is always different from the experiences. That is the third step. Now in the stage one is complete. I say the stage one as the preparation now in the second stage of this meditation or mindfulness, we purify the mind. Why? So that the mind naturally moves with him and becomes a one-pointed mind. We don't want lazy mind. We don't want wandering mind. We don't want obsessed mind. See that? 
So what should we do with the purification? We have two steps, simple steps. First step, look deep inside the rib cage, your heart, your chest. So when you look inside the chest, in the space, start breathing. Quick and short breath, gentle breath with the cheerfulness of the mind. Continue quick, short breath, but mind should remain cheerful. You don't force yourself, just casual. But keep looking deep inside the heart. Don't disturb her, Terry. Don't disturb Terry at this moment. Continue. And stop this. This is, there are 100, I would say more than 100 steps to purify the mind. So we are using a simple way. You may be feeling little freshness, more sensation inside the head or into the body. Just recognize and accept it. We have the second step that helps the mind to go deeper. Take a deep, silent and slow breathing. First into the belly, then into the ribcage, up to the throat. And while breathing out, make the humming sound louder, deeper, longer. Your next breath is deeper than the previous one. When you inhale, totally silence. When you exhale, louder, deeper, and longer humming sound. Start. Mm. So take your time to inhale deeply through, silently and slowly, while exhaling louder, deeper and longer humming sound. Mm -hmm. I believe you remember during inhalation, you are not in a hurry. You inhale deeply, silently, slowly. It is taking time. Same way. Humming also takes the time and that will take you very deep. You will experience what it means by the mind moving within living within. Continue, please.
Stop this humming sound. Awareness, knowledge, and experience. You will find that the body doesn't want to move. Why it doesn't want to move? The mind is going inside. Secondary experiences are there. The freshness may be there. Recognize every experience. Accept them. Why? We are not an experience. We are an experience that we understood in the beginning of today's talk. But we have to move the mind little deeper where the past impressions and the wandering distractions are absent. So we are moving into the stage three. And it is just a play and a fun step. Don't take it to your mind as if, you know, that is a very bigger step. Look deep inside the forehead at any point in the space. Keep looking there. The mantra is, Om. So what you do mentally without moving your lips or the tongue, you hammer this mantra deep inside the forehead in the space. How mentally it sounds like Om 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 Mental, not moving the lips or the tongue. Remember, we are doing little higher step mentally and you will discover the mind is reluctant to do it and still you do it the mind will say what is this don't listen to the mind continue hammering hum, 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 hum. mentally i am doing it loudly to make you understand no movement of the lips or the tongue you are one pointed keep looking deep inside the forehead and continue hammering why I use the word hammering? With a hammer, you hammer the nail into the wall. What happens? That nail goes very deep inside. And then it becomes very difficult for you to return, to bring the nail out of the wall. Just a symbol, a simile to make you understand. This is what we are doing for the mind. Continue hammering. You are doing it mentally. I'm demonstrating it loudly to make you understand. And stop hammering. You may have variety of experiences. Maybe you may experience tingling in the sensation, vision in the colors. You may experience it's a, there the body has become bigger or smaller. Recognize and accept them. Let these experiences come. Let them go. 
that is the center of the knowledge. If the mind is clear with the knowledge and understanding, then we go to the center of the heart, the emotion, purify, looking deep inside the heart, in the space, and start hammering. Um, 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 quick, fast, and loud in your mind. No movement of the lips or the tongue. You are hammering so quick, fast, and loud, there is no thought in between the two ohm. And if that happens, you will see the result. And stop hammering, remain as you are, no movement in the body. You see that we are tapping the inner, deeper, higher level of the mind. Where lies the higher, deeper layer of the mind? It is like an ocean. On the surface, you have the waves turmoil due to the wind of and deep inside the ocean the water is calm so we are asking the mind to realize first thing second part is that when you hammer quick fast and loud make sure that you have no other thought between the two ohm and if there is means what the mind is working on you. And if there is no thought, you are working on the mind. So the third center is the center of action inside the belly button. Keep looking inside the belly button in the space. Good. Maybe that is space or blankness or darkness. Everything is acceptable. And start hammering om, 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 mentally. Make sure there is no thought between the two wrong. And you'll find the result.
and stop hammering mood the mind on the entire body from the top of the head to the toes slowly and gently experience sensation relaxation and stillness move the mind once again from the crown of the head to the toes sensation relaxation and stillness we are moving to the stage number four we want to deepen this experience why deepening the experience drops the craziness laziness reactiveness of the mind you see that is why i give a brief talk knowledge is very important don't do any practice based on a belief dogma cult every master of the eastern wisdom says this so the next step is we deepen the experience how look inside the forehead mentally sing oh mentally then see the space then sing shanti again that is one milestone you covered now say for example you want to cover uh, 50 miles so you see the space okay and then you chant on mentally space then you said mentally shanti that means let there there is a peace good now that is one mile continue to move inside you see the space and again you see the space shanti so you have gone little deeper again again third milestone um, we're not in a hurry you're driving smoothly what you're driving you're driving the mind smoothly you're driving the mind on om shanti where you are driving in the highway where is the highway inside your forehead i'm making the step as clear to you as possible <clears throat> And if you cover the 50 miles, may not be even after 20 miles, you are already there. Continue. Through the similes, I can make you understand why what is beyond and behind the mind is clearly understood by the similes, by the metaphor. inside the forehead there is an infinite space yes you see the space highway oh um, again you see the space shanti so the mind has driven one mile again space on um, space shanti second not in a hurry
I feel you all have understood every step of the practice. I appreciate it. And now, strap them shanty, but don't move anything. Keep the mind living fit and do nothing. The last step is breath mindfulness. Three-pointed awareness of the breath. So the last step, I keep it as it is. So what you need to do, do nothing, just an awareness. What is awareness? First point of awareness. You know the breath is going in and out. Keep knowing it. Second point of awareness. When the breath goes in and comes out, you feel the sensation of the breath inside the nose. Second point. Third point of awareness. Do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath. It is almost like doing nothing. Your mind, you are fully aware, the mind is calm, mind is living within. In that state of awareness, whatever is happening, the breath is happening. So you are knowing the breath is going in and out, you are feeling the sensation, that too is natural. When the air strikes the nose, you feel the sensation and third point keeps your attention as it is. What is that third point? You do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Do you need to make any effort? No. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.
Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Your hand must be clean completely. Bring the mind on the right hand. Your mind goes to the left hand. Lift your both the palms. Place it on your closed eyes. So what do you see inside? And open the eyes inside the palms. You see the space. Ask yourself what is your experience. And bring the hands down. And let us unmute your volume so that we can share the experience. How are you, Michelle? I'm doing well, Arturia. How are you? Fine. How do you feel? I think, yes. Um, for the most part, I feel very relaxed. I felt vibrations um, when I was silently chanting or when you were. Um, Good. More my lip we um sometimes in the air but obviously in thoughts good i can see the smile tells me the true story how are you sophie i am good at the end of the especially when you were uh sh sh singing shanty I could feel my whole, uh, like my whole trunk. Yeah. So solid from the head down to where I was sitting. It was very, very strong. Very strong. I was with you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. We were all together. <laughs> <laughs> You know what happens when the mind continues to move within and live within. There comes a point where the chanting of these mantras instantly aligns with the mind. Not a big thing. But some people, if the point of awareness is inside the spine and I'm chanting, it will blast with a lot of strong sensations. So nothing mystical, but yes. But that is a good experience. So how are you, Terry? Well, I'm halfway across the floor and I 